I have two PlayStation 3 controllers here. One doesn't seem to be able to connect, even when I connect the wire to the PlayStation 3 directly. Um, it just charges, and uh, otherwise it's unusable. And this one, somebody just gave this one to me, and this one is obviously missing a button, and it looks like a dog possibly chewed this. Um, this one does work, so I am going to switch the cases between these two so that this one looks like this one, even though it will be an official PlayStation 3 controller that actually works. Now this one is a third party, I don't even know, it doesn't even say anything like this one. So I'm going to start by removing all of the screws from both controllers. Now it looks like there are five screws in the bottom. Now both batteries work also, so I will be keeping the extra battery as well. Um, well I guess it looks like this one is missing a screw. I'm not even sure if this other one down here is even holding. And the battery is just held on by a little sticky pad, so I'm going to move the battery out of the way. So that I can unscrew. I probably could have got it, gotten it without moving the battery out of the way, but this makes it easier. This is the insides of the cheap one. I'm going to set that aside now. Now with some of these older controllers you got to be a little careful pulling things out. Things will be a little bit stuck from dirt, grime, whatever might have been spilled inside of them. And you can see this thing is pretty destroyed. So give them a quick rinse, clean them all up. Just helps the controllers make better contact with the, from the buttons to the electronic board. And now to place the rubber pads into the good casing. Now these are the rubber pads and everything from the official PlayStation controller. So it looks like to get this to work, we have to cut off these little plastic parts here.
I'm just going to trim this up a bit to make sure it fits. Now with this piece trimmed, it should fit in here a lot better. It's, ooh, oh yeah, it went right down. Okay. So, I changed the uh, little rubber pads for the official PlayStation ones. So here are the old ones here. And uh, I put the official PlayStation ones in here. And then I have to just get this board positioned on here. These contacts right here have to be pressed against these contacts here on this ribbon cable thing. So it goes in together something like that. Now obviously the insides of these controllers had to be different for patent reasons, I'm sure. Make sure that these little plastic nubs come popping through. I guess I gotta put the... So the ribbon cable has to go down onto these little plastic pillars. go and then those two little plastic pillars just have to poke through these two holes here like so and uh, you need to spin the analog sticks to get them to um, for the shafts to go into their little holes and then right after that I put the screw in here to hold everything together while I tried to get these pieces in and then I had to trim a tiny little bit off of this black part right here. It fit fine over here, but for some reason it wasn't going together well over here. But now everything seems to be fine. So, all the buttons seem to be good. Alright. Gotta put the battery back in. There's a little line on the top, a little a groove that goes through the groove here. So you just push that right in. There we go. And place the battery right there like so. Okay, so I plug this controller in turned on the PlayStation 3 and it seemed like it synced up. Yep, there we go. So now I just have to put the back cover on and everything should be good. So the controller is synced, the controller works. This PlayStation 3 that somebody gave to me also works. It seems like it has to restore itself, but after it's done doing that, even if it fails, I should be able to fix it. But to get this to actually fit in here, um, it looks like I have to trim these pillars down to the height that I trimmed these down, or at least this one. Looks like there's six pillars to trim all together. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Now I already did this one and this one, so now I just gotta trim these other four down. Now I'm just using my handy dandy Harbor Freight uh, wannabe Dremel tool here to trim these pieces. Go slow. Be careful. Let's turn this thing down a little bit more.
Make it a little flatter. All right. Hopefully that'll do the trick. Try to get out some of this plastic so it's not falling down inside your controller and rattling around. The screws back in. Totally finished. And it's still connected to the PlayStation in the other room. But anyway, you can test the buttons, feel that they all bounce back. I'm gonna have to actually try a game, of course. But, looks good. Seems like this one button might stick a little, might not be in the perfect position. But I can open it up and, I guess, make any little final adjustments. But this is pretty much it. Two, two broken PlayStation controllers made into one working one that actually syncs now. So I'm going to test this controller now by playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, or at least starting it. Alright, well, the rumble packs both definitely work. So jump works. Not sure what that did, I guess it's reloading. Okay. Alright, well, I tested all the buttons just before getting killed, and it seemed like everything worked. Let's just make sure that... Now, this one button that sticks a little, you just have to press it. It just presses in a little further, but other than that, it works fine, actually. The stick, analog sticks works, everything works. So, there we go. Working PS3 controller.